Hi, I'm Herbert van der Sompel at uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory and I want to talk to you about uh, object reuse and exchange uh, specifications or we for short by the Open Archives Initiative that previously released a protocol for metadata harvesting. ORE was a two-year community-based effort that concluded in October of 2008 with the release of version 1 of the specifications available at the URL that you see here on uh, the slide. The problem that ORE addresses is that of how to deal with aggregations of web resources. And it is really the compound digital object problem from digital library research and practice that has been reformulated in terms of the web architecture. The original motivation for the ORE effort uh, was found in scholarly communication, where the situation uh, today is such that most actually of the object, the materials that are uh, published online consist of multiple uh, resources. You know, they can have a paper in multiple formats, but they can also have associated data sets or video recordings of experiments, what have you not. They can exist in multiple versions and they can have deal with multiple identifiers. So there's clearly a notion of a compound object or an aggregation of web resources at play. Now, the problem of aggregations is one could say rather universal and you know just to give you two more examples of aggregations on the web here is uh, the Flickr set that clearly consists of multiple uh, resources, multiple uh, images here and even if you drill down to the level of a single image in Flickr you'll see that one could consider it an aggregation because that image exists in multiple uh, resolutions. So we hope that although the ORE problem had this initial motivation in scholarly communication that the solution we um, provide is generic enough so that it could deal with other kind of uh, aggregations that are found on the web. Before I go into the solution itself, I want to quickly uh, revise the foundations uh, upon which it was built. First of all, the web architecture with its core uh, notions of resource URI representation. Concepts from the semantic web, where one accords uh, URIs for documents, just as in the document web, and we call those documents information resources, but one also accords URIs for physical entities, for concepts, for abstractions, the things that are called non-information resources. And then there's, of course, RDF used in semantic web to express properties, relationships, uh, pertaining to resources. In addition to that, ORE built on a conventions introduced by the linked data effort, whereby HTTP URIs are actually used for both information and non-information resources, and where in order to obtain information about a non-information resource, one is actually redirected with the HTTP 303 from the HTTP URI of the non-information resource to the HTTP URI of an information resource that describes, provides a description of that non-information uh, resource. So, so let's just presume this is the web with its resources and you know they're interlinked and you know let's just presume that for one reason or another these resources belong together. Now there's really two things that are missing in order to be able to deal with these you know resources that belong together. First of all an identity for the union of these resources. There's nothing one can do on the web without an identity, without a URI. And second, actually some kind of a boundary, you know, uh, that delineates, that says, well, these resources are part of the aggregation and these here are not. So, the way ORE proposes to solve this is, well, first of all, let's introduce, you know, uh, a resource that stands for the union of these resources. And that's the one you see here, and that's the aggregation. 
And then second, let's introduce a document that basically describes this aggregation, meaning it is going to introduce this URI and then it's going to say, well, these resources here, of course, identified by means of the URIs, are part of that aggregation. And then following the linked data recommendations, this is here, the aggregation is a non-information resource. It is identified by an HTTP URI. When dereferencing that HTTP URI, one ends up with an HTTP 303 at the resource map URI. And here we have the resource map that describes the aggregation. I'm going to share a few basics of the ORE uh, data model with you to make uh, clear what is uh, going on. So it all starts with a few resources, these here, that for one reason or another belong uh, together. So the first thing that we do now is we introduce a new resource here and that resource is an aggregation. It is a non-information resource. It's a conceptual construct that stands for the union of these three resources. Now, in order to connect the aggregation with aggregated resources, ORE introduces um, a property that's called ORE aggregates. We call these resources aggregated resources here, but aggregated resources are just plain resources on the web. In most cases, they won't even know that they are being aggregated by an aggregation. Of course, so far we worked in thin air, we still need to make this concrete and we do so by introducing a resource map that has a representation. So that basically makes a document available that describes all of this here. This is an information resource. And in that information resource, uh, in that document basically, there's an ORE describes relationship uh, e expressed between the resource map and the aggregation. Then, in addition to that, we want to express some metadata about the resource map, who created it, when was it most recently modified, you know, because we kind of want to know who says uh, something about an aggregation. A resource map, in essence, then minimally describes what is on the screen here. It introduces the aggregation, the aggregated resources, and it gives some crucial metadata about the resource map itself. But it can obviously describe a lot more. And, you know, here you see a rather uh, expressive uh, resource map, basically with all kinds of relationships and properties pertaining to the aggregation, the ag aggregated resources and the resource map itself. In addition to these basics, the ORE data model also introduces a few more advanced concepts for which we do not have the time now. But a really interesting one is the notion of an identity, a URI for a resource, the way it exists in the context of an aggregation. So again, the specifications are available at this URI. They come with a really nice uh, primer. The several user guides, uh, some of which talk about resource implementations in different uh, technologies, RDF XML, RDFA, and Atom. Uh, there's a specific document here about HTTP implementation. The whole HTTP 303 uh, thing is discussed there for different scenarios. And then there's a document about how to make uh, resource maps discoverable. There are uh, communities that are already adopting uh, the ORE specs. I don't have time to go into detail, but there's a beautiful implementation uh, by the Library of Congress in Chronicling uh, America, which is uh, a site for digitized newspapers. There is a browser plugin that visualizes uh, aggregations when resource maps are detected. There is some adoption uh, by Microsoft, actually two tools by Microsoft, a Word plugin and a repository platform that comes with ORE support. And then there's a WordPress uh, plugin that basically exposes aggregations of posts and pages. Well, this is the end of the presentation. This is where I typically would ask you whether there's any questions, but that is not going to work. 
chances are that you deal with aggregations of web resources in your efforts. If you do, please have a look at ORE specifications. Thanks a lot.